Here we have a basic telescope which is suitable for general purpose astronomy. Uh, this one is a CONUS and you'll see from the information it's 114 millimeters. That's about four and a half inches. Uh, focal length 900 millimeters and it gives something called an F ratio of 7.8. What that's telling you is that the focal length, that's how long it, it's, it is from the bottom of the mirror. We turn the telescope round here, like so. I take off the cover there. Look, if I just get this onto a wide, then you'll be able to see there's the mirror there. It's a special mirror, it's called a parabolic mirror, and uh, that means that it's silvered, um, and there's no glass on the silver, so the actual al it's an aluminium and silver um, powder, which makes a very highly reflective surface that goes in a very thin layer on the mirror. The mirror is parabolic, because that way it focuses the light rays, so that they come up to this spider device here, which is called a secondary, if I go around to the eyepiece here, um, if I just take the eyepiece out, if it's minus, you have to see inside there, and there's a, the secondary mirror there, and so light goes travelling down from the stars and the heavens, and it strikes the mirror with this reflective surface on The difference between that and an ordinary mirror that you may have in the living room or in the uh, bathroom is that that's got glass in front of the silver. The silvered layer is actually at the back and you can't have that in astronomy because it would basically interfere with the light rays and you get ex extra refraction, you get double images and things like that and you get distortion of the images which I'll talk about later. So the light then comes out of here to an eyepiece. Now the eyepiece I've got here, this came with the actual telescope and this one here it says on it he says it's 17, can you see that? 17 millimetres. Right. So, to, so what I can do is get my calculator, I'll just tighten that up so we can see that. If I get my calculator, I can work out on my calculator what sort of magnification I'm going to get. So I've got 900 millimetres, that's the focal length of the telescope, which is there. What I do is I divide that by the focal length of the eyepiece and that comes that's 17 equals that comes out as 52 point sorry no 60 52.94 uh, as a magnification now with that sort of magnification it's a medium magnification uh, you can see things like the moon in the whole of your eyepiece um, it's going to be larger than half a degree basically in the sky so that's a very useful eyepiece to have. The trouble is if you use something of higher magnification, going to my little uh, box of tricks I've got here, if you use something which has got higher magnification than that, uh, as an example, you get here's another one from my task up here. Uh, this one here is a 10 millimeter. This, this is one that came with the set. Well, I've got two eyepieces that came with it. This one here is is it says 10 millimeters. Right, you might think, oh, it's going to make everything look a lot larger, but you're sacrificing uh, here because, do the maths again, you've got 900 uh, divided by 10. I'm sure you can work it out yourself. You get 90. So I've nearly doubled the magnification, which means that although things look twice as big it's much harder to find things in the sky because that basically means I'm only looking at half of the area of the sky for that reason and that reason alone unless you really want to be looking at uh, planets uh, and at high magnification then this telescope is better for looking at uh, deep space objects now this space this telescope as you can see has got an electronic motor on it and also, what's very handy, it's got something called an equatorial mount. Now, on your equatorial mount, you'll find that there are two clamps. There's one here. This one controls the movement in, in, an, in one of the axes here. Okay. And then the other one controls the movement in, in the other axis. That one there. And you need to have them 
loosened and then the telescope starts to move and you can see that it starts to move on, on an axis. I've got it in my kitchen here at the moment but it's best to show you this during the daytime. Right, so there's one axis there, okay? And then the other axis is this one here where it's, the whole telescope swings around, okay? Now those two axes are the two axes by which you can uh, track things in the sky. You have the right ascension and the declination and the right ascension is given in hours and the declination in degrees. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but on the actual this dial here, there are, there are sets of numbers here, and they're set according to whether um, how, you, how you set up your uh, right ascension and your declination, okay? And these are your declination angles, okay? There. Now, this particular telescope, not an expensive one, and it's got these, they're called worm wheels here, and there's a device there connected there. This telescope can actually be operated by using just this uh, device I've got here, which is a manual device. And basically, instead of using the motor, you'd put this uh, device here where the motor is there. Uh, and we can see it just there, okay? Uh, and you can operate the telescope whoops Daisy, there's a clamp there but basically you can clamp this that device on and it will operate the telescope 